Now, as we all know, part of the campaign is to increase awareness. Another part is to reduce obesity. But also, we want to make sure that we're going to be maximizing revenue. So, as you can see here, we've given an example of several promotions that we can offer to our sponsors. And in the appendix, you'll find a more detailed analysis. Basically, an example would be with Levy Restaurants, we give a $5 gift concession card towards healthy foods. They'd only be contributed about 50% of that, but yet they'd be seen a pretty good return on investment, 400%, which is well above the usually expected 3 to 1 ratio. In terms of a scorecard, we're going to want to unveil our program in three phases. The first phase is going to be year one and year two. And it's going to be on a year-to-year -year basis. We're going to look at school by school as well as the Bay Area breakdown. This is going to be just in the Bay Area. And we're going to sort it by race, by gender, as well as by our age groups. And now we're going to further break it down based on activities as well as dietary. Now, for activities, we're going to first want to look at the percent of individuals met the daily requirement for physical activity. Secondly, we're going to be wanting to look at, as we talked about before, one of the downfalls could be a lot of time in front of the TV or internet. So we're going to want to see the percentage of individuals who spent three hours or more watching TV or on the computer. And finally, participation. We want to see the number of kids who have been participating in at least one or more team sports. In terms of dietary analysis, the baseline measure is about you know, five fruits or vegetables a day, we all know. Well, hopefully we all know. And we're going to be looking to see if that percentage has increased among children. And finally, we're going to be looking to see the percentage of individuals who are considered obese or overweight. Also, I think as we mentioned before, part of our analysis is going to be online. Now, we want to have kids go online. We want to be able to track some of the success, whether or not they're going to be learning about whether it's dietary or physical fitness. So we're going to have some online tests where they're going to be able to track and see if they're learning. And as they get the results from this, they'll also be able to increase some money on their promotion card. In the second phase, we're going to start in year three. And this is going to be on a statewide basis. Now, one of the advantages of being in California is that there's a wide demographic. So this will hopefully be able for us to further trace the breakdown of obesity based on whether it's ethnicity, gender, or, or age group. And we're going to look on a countywide basis, as well as some of the major metropolitan areas, San Bernardino, Los Angeles, San Diego, and again, the Bay Area. Now, one of the advantages of that is that the CDC has some supplemental data that will hopefully be able to allow us to further substantiate what will be seen in terms of increased um, awareness, increased activity, and decreased rates of obesity. Furthermore, we're going to want to look at some Google Analytics just to see that we're getting a lot of eyes on our website. We want to see where they're going so we can also show some of our advertisers and sponsors. Finally, in the third phase, we're going to go from year three to five. We're going to try to mail on a nationwide basis. Now, we're still going to track what's going on in the Bay Area and in California, but hopefully this will allow us to kind of see some trends overall, how hopefully physical business is increasing and the rates of obesity are kind of leveling off. And finally, we're going to want to step back, do some analysis, reassess, and see if we need to adjust our goals. Now, we're very excited to be here today. We really appreciate the opportunity to share with you our plan for combating obesity. And now we'd love to answer some of your questions. Just, and again, please, judges, if you would speak up so that everybody can hear. Thanks, John. Uh, just so I'm clear, so this is a program, Year One, Bay Area. Okay, and you're using the nonprofits, the Boys and Girls Club, and the uh, National Latino Children's Institute to get out the word on my body is. Is that correct? You're not dealing with any local schools? Oh, no. We also would suggest that we work with schools, but we would suggest that you work with schools that the area team properties have already identified. So, you know, start with something that's measurable where you already have relationships um, in elementary schools. Some of the schools already do. For example, NBA has the FIT program and... Um, the Golden State Warriors already worked with some schools and some students from different organizations, so we would suggest going with those so to start. So you're, you're relying on the local properties who are part of SPP to try to help you get Andre into the school program. Right. Okay. The other question I had, Danica Patrick, she would be a Bay Area spokesperson? Is, well, that, is that what I see here? Yeah, she would be going to the raceway. Now she's going to be entering into NASCAR in the, 
in Spirit and Raceway. So, you know, we wanted to find a good female popular figure to include. Okay, thank you. Yep. My question was about uh, the verification and measurement, uh, both in the evaluation side and in the award side. Um, you, when you give awards, um, you, there's going to be a value. And, and, uh, how are you going to uh, measure it? Just self-reporting by, by the parents? Uh, similarly, uh, how are you going to uh, uh, measure the health progress? Are you going to include uh, biometric data on, on the card in, in the portal? Have you, have you considered any of that? Yes, there would be an extensive back end that we would be able to report from these cards, which actually we would provide to our sponsors so they could see um, maybe if it's EA Sports and they've provided a certain uh, program and they're noticing that they're not getting the traction that they that they wanted, maybe they can see what other sponsors have done and the kind of traction that it has gotten. Um, in terms of whether, whether the verification of the parents, um, we really built this based on um, Jump Rope for Heart. Um, it was an initiative that was very popular when we were younger, and it was verified by parents. And um, you know, we did a little bit of research into if they had any issues on um, kind of the prizes and whether that that ended up being an issue. And we really found it very limited. Um, so we we think that the parents would be a partner with with the child to really understand values and. And entering this, and so we would ask the parents have an e-signature that they really that they did um, use that did partake in that nutrition program, or they did exercise at a certain amount of time a day. And also, we feel that it's beneficial because these rewards are going to be healthy driven. It's going to be either be healthy food options or towards some sort of you know healthy athletic gear. And in terms of the biometric data. We wanted to kind of give them the option because we don't want there to be a stigma about you know how much weight you've lost, the biggest loser. So while we're going to be gauging a lot of the percentage of the physical activity and you know some of their knowledge about nutrition, we don't want to really force them to put you know a, a quantifiable amount on how much weight they specifically lost. I have a question. Uh, you're looking to work together with some of the other initiatives like the Play 60 and. Uh, some of the other initiatives. Uh, can you talk about the concept of whether you would be a competitor with theirs, and uh, if you're looking to have one unified message, how that might affect the illusion of their brands that they're trying to build, and how might they respond? Yeah, sure. Like Maury mentioned, as a center of excellence, we will kind of utilize the best practices from each, so we aren't going to compete with them. We're hoping to create this umbrella program that utilizes the aspects of each. And, and you can transfer those to others. So play 60, you know, get out and be active. And so somehow we can recreate that for another entity. Maybe it's not play 60 if NFL has that branded, but we can use that idea of get out and be active with another entity. It'd be similar to the Susan G. Komen and how they have many different charities that support Susan G. Komen. So for instance, the NFL, of course, you saw the pink bracelets and the pink, like the pink uniforms. And so that was, the NFL's way to support the Susan G. Komen. And so what we would be doing is we want the NFL to support the My Body Is campaign, but not to lose sight of what they've already done. They've put a lot of money into their various campaigns, and we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We just want this to be a supplement and more of a unified approach and to shed a positive light and a positive brand to kind of supplement what they've already done. What do you think is going to be the greatest single barrier to entry and getting this off the ground? Well, to begin with, sometimes it's tough to get sponsors or partners to buy into it. So I think getting a lot of that funding, especially in these difficult economic times, and also because a lot of these, as we've mentioned, the programs have also had their own initiative. So funding, I think, is one of the barriers. But I, I feel like once we prove our model, we're going to be able to get everyone to hop on board. And I think that's why we started with the Bay Area approach. We have a lot of contacts in that area, and we've established a reputation within that area among certain organizations. So we really want the word to spread about how helpful some of these brainstorming sessions and these best practices sessions are, and how much these organizations, such as NFL 60, have learned by taking part in some of these brainstorming sessions and how that has really supplemented some of their programs. And just to add to that, you know, we talked about having a national campaign of My Body Is, and part of why that's great is it builds on that model of the Live Strong bracelet, which maybe took a little bit to gain traction, but once it did, everybody wants a piece of that. So if you can have My Body Is become a stronger national brand, 
people will be more interested in it, they'll buy into it, and it'll be easier to raise the funding. If I'm reading this correctly, you have $25 million grants and contributions in phase one, year one. I didn't see a lot of breakdown about where the $25 million was coming from. Um, you know, we weren't able to get a ton of information on that, but based on kind of the past um, finances we saw, and based on what we saw coming from the grant received from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, that was a an estimate that we made. And we also kind of looked at some of the comparable, um, how much teams would be donating in um, years past as well. In terms of engaging uh, the public health community and public health partners, uh, I, I think, um, uh, I think one thing is they have to do this is competitive business. And secondly, we've not succeeded at uh, making too much of a dent in terms of these epidemics. So I applaud everyone who's putting the resource into it and have the business and sports community uh, participate might uh, really uh, change the equation and, 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 and maybe put other practitioners, uh, those may make them a little jealous and then they'll, they'll come along. But you're establishing a center for excellence. That means you're promulgating a standards. And uh, on that side, and on the measurement side too, where I think they'd be very intrigued if you could pick up data on kids that they can't pick up through this commitment card device, you might have an opportunity for some grant partnerships. Have you thought those types of partnerships and opportunities through? Definitely. I mean, I think one of the things we noticed in our research, for example, for Health and Human Services, was that they said businesses that engage in spectator sports were doing some things but weren't helping them track. And they really sort of gave a cause to action for teams and leagues to do things and track them to share that information with them. And I think that's something that we can do through the website um, and through some of the other things we talked about. I also think that when we talk about the grassroots campaign and reaching out to some of those, for example, the faith-based organizations in the schools, we're really picking up on their theme. And I think just in terms of um, letting everyone know that we don't see this as a competition, you can always say, you know, we really want to build on your best ideas as well and share ideas with you. Also, as the federal government has, has taken part in this, that's going to open up some funds, hopefully, to come to us as they see the progress we're making in education and increased activity. So hopefully that will open it up for us to get some funds that we can utilize on this overall brand. So on the Any last questions before we wrap up? The commitment card, that data, you're sharing that with your partners? Yes. yes. Yeah. Data sharing, that data mining seems to be a very important uh, piece of the business. To, to fan behavior and uh, uh, people, clients' behavior and purchasing and behavior and, and public health behavior. Do you see any way to uh, combine all of this uh, through your uh, to, to leverage all of this simultaneously? Sure, I think we want to be able to slice and dice the data to see kids that are, are active a certain amount, what does that mean that they're choosing for these benefits? And is there a way to draw correlations between a kid that is engaging in mainly the nutrition aspect and then they're interested in these types of activities? And I think our, our sponsors would find that as very valuable information that they can kind of help to build some of their youth campaigns. It's very interesting because you aren't able to survey a, um, a youth, um, you're not able to go into a school or really target um, a child to do a survey, but you can look at how their purchasing behavior is and you can look at where they're going on their websites to really gain some information. So without um, targeting them for surveys, we can still gain some information that I think that would be very useful to some of our partners. Also on the fan experience side, we could have a kiosk or something at, at our partner's uh, entity, so you know, if it's the, the uh, Giants or something, we could have a kiosk where they could check in with their with their card and then they can utilize that with Levy's and or whoever the concessionaire is that we partner with and then they can use that to get a coupon on some healthy food at the concessionaire. Well, again if unless there's any final question, I certainly I all of us if we could please congratulate Team G for <laughs>